When we learned of the brutal death and dismemberment of Zara Baker, a little Australian girl living in America, it was almost incomprehensible. Zara, with the bright eyes and big smile, had survived cancer and had overcome much more than should be asked of any 10-year-old. Then this courageous little girl travelled across the world with her father, Adam, believing they were both embarking on a new adventure in America. Instead, Zara's life would end horribly. So what sort of person would kill an innocent and vulnerable child in such a heinous way? Well, tonight you will meet that person. Elisa Baker, Zara's stepmother, breaks her silence, talking to us from inside prison. This is North Carolina's prison for women, home to some of America's most violent criminals, including Elisa Baker the stepmother who pleaded guilty to murdering and dismembering 10-year-old Australian girl, Zara Baker. Of the 1,200 inmates here, Elisa Baker is the most hated. So much so for her own protection, she spends her days in isolation. We've come here because Elisa Baker has agreed to talk to answer the questions she avoided when she pleaded guilty to Zara's murder. Getting in to see her is no easy feat. This is a maximum security prison where nothing is taken for granted. And even though America's most despised child killer arrives unshackled, a guard is always by her side. What kind of person dismembers a disabled child? A sick person. Does it take an evil person? Yes. It's an evil act? Yes, ma'am. Elisa Baker will sit in a prison cell at least until she's 70. After entering a plea bargain which would see her avoid death row. How do you sleep at night knowing that a little girl, a little disabled girl, was cut into pieces and thrown away? Some nights are hard, but I miss her. Do you really? Yes, ma'am. This horrific story began six years ago when Elisa met Australian Adam Baker on the internet. He was a single father and Zara's dad. I thought I had met Prince Charming. Adam was your Prince Charming? Yeah. What drew you to him? What did you like about him? What I thought was his honesty about everything and the fact that he was a single dad and that he loved his daughter enough to raise her himself and not let his family or her family raise Zara. Zara Baker was a gutsy little girl. From the age of six, she'd battled and beaten cancer. But surgeons had to remove part of her lungs and amputate her left leg. And chemotherapy robbed her of hearing. As Adam told me two years ago, after so much heartache, he believed his online romance would be their new beginning. What were you hoping for? What did you think your life was going to be like? Happy family. Um... A lot of love, more children, brothers and sisters for Zara, but 
didn't turn out that way. When Adam Baker married Elisa, he became her seventh husband. It was the first of many poor decisions that would open the door to a world of lies and deceit. Did you ever stop to think that it might be right to tell him you were already married? Yes. Why didn't you tell him? Me and my husband had went through several bad years. And it was my understanding when I went to Australia that he filed for divorce. So it was my, my belief that I was divorced. Why did you introduce your husband as your brother? That's the way he left it, because he wanted to be in Zara's life and he knew that Adam wouldn't let uh, him be in Zara's life if he knew that he was my husband. None of that makes sense. I know it doesn't. I know it doesn't. Elisa Baker grew up the middle child of three girls. Those who knew her said she was always cunning and manipulative and a compulsive liar. In a recent letter from prison, Elisa wrote, I always knew something wasn't right with me. How did you view yourself before coming to prison? What sort of person do you believe you were? Good person. Um, pretty much would give you the shirt off my back. Um, never met a stranger. Mm -hmm. Still don't, even in here. Elisa Baker already had three children, and when she and Adam married and moved to her hometown of Hickory in North Carolina, she became mother to Zara. Down better than without them. Tell me about your relationship with Zara. We hit it off right from the bat. What did you like about Zara? She had spunk about her. She never gave up. Always had a smile on her face. Always. Did you have a close bond? Very close. She called me mom and I treated her like she was my own child. She, she got no different treatment than my other kids did. Actually, my other kids got jealous of her. They really? said I treated her better. <laughs> But members of her family and neighbours thought otherwise and reported Elisa to authorities. The Department of Social Services investigated four reports of abuse against Zara. Why were so many people worried about her? Why would a school teacher give her her own personal cell number and say to her, if you ever need me, call me? That right there was out of protocol. I even said something to the principal about that. Me and Adam went because that was against the rules. They should not have ever done that. Why did you sign a piece of paper here that admitted that you have a history and a pattern of physical, verbal and psychological abuse of Zara? I never signed that paper. You did? There's your signature. That's no case. Somebody's had me sign something I shouldn't have signed because that's not so. That's not your signature? That's Along my, with your attorney? That's not your signature. That's my plea bargain, right? Yes, but you signed that you accept that you had a history and a pattern of physical, verbal and psychological abuse of Zara. That was in with my plea bargain. Yes, so you signed, you signed it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. There are many inconsistencies in Elisa Baker's story, but the most significant involve Zara's death. Tell me about the day that Zara died. Coming up. Please. That's not good enough. 
The questions Elisa Baker hasn't faced... That's the truth, isn't it? No, ma'am. ...till now. You thought that got you off the hook? That's next on 60 Minutes. It was a crime as brutal as it was unimaginable. Ten-year-old Australian girl Zara Baker was murdered and dismembered by her American stepmother. To avoid death row, Elisa Baker entered a plea bargain, which means she's never had to answer questions about her most horrific crime. That is, until now. On the day Zara died, September 24, 2010, Elisa Baker claims she left her stepdaughter alone in their Hickory home to go shopping, returning in the afternoon. By this time, it was like three, three somewhere around in there. And, um, She was laying on her bed. And I said, Zara, are you okay? And I walked over to the bed and I said, Zara, she still didn't move. I put my hand on her and I could tell she wasn't breathing. And my first thought was CPR. And so I immediately started CPR. I worked on her for probably about 30 minutes and couldn't get her back. begging the whole time for God not to take her, you know. Right then, I should have called 911. But I got scared. Of what? I didn't know what to do. I've never been faced with anything like that. I've never... If you'd done CPR, You'd dial 911, wouldn't you? Some, most people would have, yes. Elisa alleges she called Zara's father, Adam, and that it was he who dismembered Zara. If we're going to believe anything you say, why would you ring the police and say, I'm not having a part of this? That is the most heinous thing to do. He was my husband. Please. <laughs> That's not good enough. It's not. It's just not good enough. You know that. I know. It's an allegation both police and Adam Baker have totally rejected. That's the biggest lie she's ever told. Um, for starters, there's no way I could do that to my child. For her to sit there and say that I dismembered my child, there's no way on earth that I could do that. Inside the bedroom, a spray of Zara's blood was found on the ceiling. Her body parts were scattered in bushland. Elisa alleges Adam discarded his daughter's remains that she was forced to be with him. Of course, the evidence doesn't show that what you're saying is the truth, does it? It, it does to, to a point, but there's a little bit... Not even to a point. The phone records show that on the day the body was disposed of, the day that you told police it was disposed of, there were something like nine calls and many of those calls were to Adam. Why would you call him if he's right beside you? He was 
He was calling my phone. I wasn't calling his because he kept losing my phone. No, you were calling him. I wasn't calling him. Phone records show that he was 20 miles away. He wasn't with you, was he? Yes, ma'am. I don't think so. That's the truth, isn't it? No, ma'am. Phone records confirm Adam was at work, not in the area where Zara's body was disposed of, but that Elisa's cell phone was. Did you murder Zara? No, ma'am. Why do you deny this when the evidence is overwhelmingly that you did? Because I'll continue to stand by my story. You'll continue to lie? No, I'll stand by my story. Uh, Scott Riley, your lawyer, said that the evidence was overwhelmingly against you. I think he said that the evidence was such that it would take a jury something like five minutes to convict you. Something like that. Well, if your own lawyer says that, what does it say about you? that nobody was listening to what I was saying. They were going by circumstantial evidence. They weren't going by anything I was saying. Twenty-five days after Zara was reported missing, Elisa Baker, in a deal to avoid a death sentence, led police to the little girl's remains. How did you feel when her body parts were found? How did you feel about that? Relieved. Why? Because she was going to be all put back into one. Mm. And when her skull was found? I was relieved as well because it showed no abuse. You thought that got you off the hook? No. Of the bones recovered, medical officers were able to see Zara's little body had been sawn apart. The autopsy report says Zara's death was the result of undetermined homicidal violence. You're innocent. Fight it. Why didn't you? You heard the evidence against me. Well, that means, from what I could see, you are as guilty as sin. You are a guilty woman. And you will not take responsibility for your actions. There again, that's your opinion. It's the opinion of the state. It's an opinion of the lawmakers. It is the opinion of your own family. Some of my family. For the people of Hickory, the brutal murder of a vulnerable, disabled little girl was hard to accept. Determined she'll not be forgotten, they've named a park in Zara's honour. Adam Baker has returned with his daughter's remains to Australia. While the wife he never really had considers her fate. You have to accept that the evidence is against you. Yes, ma'am, I know that. Why then am I not looking at one of the most reviled evil women in America? Probably in your eyes you think you are. No remorse? I have remorse. What is it? I wish things would have been different. Well, you have a long time to consider it. Yes, ma'am, I do. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. 
To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.